and I'm going to talk about uh, some things we did uh, this spring to shrink the size of, uh, of a LibreOffice-based application on iOS. Switch statement and 
and many of the of the cases are for situations that don't occur on mobile. Uh, one way to get rid of this code is of course to put if defs all over the place and that quickly leads to quite ugly code of course and we didn't want to do that but only put if defs in the places where it actually <coughs> helps a lot. So some other approach was needed and uh, luckily there was one one area where we could could lose a lot of these 90 megabytes it's this ICU library uh, it means internationalization internationalization components for Unicode it's what we use for uh, to support various uh, character sets and and languages and uh, encodings and whatever. Uh, normally, all the data that IC uses uh, it gets compiled into a shared library or into, a, into code anyway as constant data in the, in the code segment. Um, and that's how we use it on, on desktop platforms. Uh, but when you build ICU, you can also instead create a data file, which mm, basically amounts to the actual data is the same structure anyway because uh, this shared library just contains the same data wrapped into a, a shared library. And then you just have to in the code uh, map this file to memory and, and tell ICU that this is the data you should use. And the size of this data is uh, 23 megabytes, so that saved quite a lot. Um, but there was still quite a lot to go. Uh, the next thing we looked at was the local data tables. Um, we generate data from from uh, manually maintained and get maintained, I guess, XML files for all the locales we know about, and there are quite many of them because, of course, LibreOffice wants to uh, be the one application or desk desktop application for everywhere in the world, uh, and that's a good thing. Uh, but for some application on iOS, we can be a bit, or whoever creates that application can be a bit more, uh, doesn't have to be so all-inclusive <coughs> and drop some, some locales that they don't think that will have so, such many, so many customers. And so I added this bit locales uh, configure, configure time option that can be then used to restrict what gets uh, gets built and compiled in. Uh, it would be even better to use also for this uh, data files and not have the data in code, but uh, it can be bit complicated, depends on how the data is structured, if it contains lots of pointers to other places in the data, then to turn that into files that are simply mapped in requires some some coding changes that I didn't want to get into at, at that point. Uh, another source of large data is the dictionaries. Uh, this doesn't actually mean like dictionaries that would tell what words mean, but it's uh, what is it actually? It's like, it's like break iterators and stuff, and, and uh, maybe not for Japanese and Chinese spelling. Check what that. Word iterators. Word iterators, yeah. Mm. And actually, I think this is what partially duplicates what's already in ICU. Is it so? Yeah. But we, I think. <laughs> Perhaps I'm not even sure if we actually need this or not, but 
Anyway, we don't dare touch it. <laughs> Uh, and, but luckily in this case, this data is quite simply structured, so here we can use memory map files instead. And this was, I think, was several megabytes. Mm. Then we also had large data files for the OOXML custom shape presets. You still hear me? Yeah. Uh, this is generated code from the OOXML uh, specification and uh, we used to generate like tons of these very similar, similar classes that had slightly different code or data in them and uh, Miklos then changed that into instead generate data files that we already at runtime. And do you remember how much uh, space was saved that, but by that? Was it some, a few megabytes or something? Mm, I think it was that in that ballpark. I can check the size of the generated data. Yeah. But, um, it's uh, one and a half megabyte. Okay, one and a half megabyte. And then uh, one thing that we had all already been doing earlier, but was then continued because of this was to uh, split these Uno components into smaller ones by refactoring. Because some of the Uno components did quite a lot of things and uh, not all of these functions were such that were actually necessarily needed in the same application and that could be simplified then. And also, we then also did some more, some more aggressive if defing in some places that that uh, pulled in lots of code. Uh, for instance, all the code that we have for for help features on desktop, <coughs> it's not really uh, relevant to mobile platforms because help will be. It exists to implement in a different way anyway, or accessibility features, which typically also would be need totally new code anyway. And also extensions. Uh, for iOS, you can't even have any extensions, it would be against, against the App Store rules. So it's pointless to link in code at has to do with managing extensions. Uh, then we have another thing that also partial, partial at least duplicates what we already have in the ICU, all these character set conversion tables. Uh, quite many of them are for such encodings that are definitely not needed in, a, in an application that only wants to deal with like modern file formats like ODF and OOXML because they basically use UTF-8 anyway. So you don't need a, anything for some HP Roman 8 or, or Apple Cyrillic or something. And of course it's the uh, Japanese and Chinese and Korean ones that are the really large ones. And this, these are also now behind, the, behind that with locals configure time option. Mm. Then something that was actually quite surprising that it helped a lot was to use a, a better optimization level for the, com for the compiler. This is, it's Clang that's used, so this is not something that GCC would have. This OZ, it, it, uh, I think it was like 10 megabytes or something that it helped. Anyway, quite a lot. Unfortunately, Clang is not bug free, so uh, a few bugs apparently exist 
when you use OZ, and uh, they were totally randomish. So we just had to look around <laughs> those then the places that were miscompiled when using OZ. Uh, then one thing that you might think of would be leak time, uh, leak time code generation <coughs> and optimization. Unfortunately, this is not really something that can be used in this case because uh, because we have so much code, it takes the leak time very, very long to generate code and optimize it at leak time. I once tried it and the linker grew to like 10 times my physical memory size during one hour and I lost patience. Uh, luckily one thing we don't need to think about is how to how to make the linker actually linking just code that's, that could be used for reference or is reference because that's what it does automatically. And uh, this is based on, on actual functions, not, not like object files. Mm. There is one thing I just studied that uh, when working on this for iOS, it's easy to, to make assumptions based upon how you have done in, in Linux or seen in Linux, but uh, that's something I should be careful with because the File formats are different, and, and the tool chain is, is different. Uh, then, when you are trying to reduce the size of of the executable, you need to figure out what you should concentrate on, and uh, for that, the, there aren't really any really good methods, but it's. Uh, quite manual work, or uh, you have to look at the linker map and then just do some script to, to manipulate it and get the data out in a suitable sorted or, or processed fashion. And we have a script that collects some statistics from, from the map file and, uh, and tell you which, uh, which libraries, for instance, uh, from which libraries most of the most of the code is coming, or or which the largest object files are? I think something like that. Are exactly. You can check the file and see what it what it says it does. And then the the final result when when we had done this enough was that the tile. LibreOffice size was 43 megabytes. So it was less than half the size of what was finished when we started. And uh, as you might guess, this was done for Cloudon, so thanks, thanks to them for doing this. And uh, this, that's all I have. Thank you. Questions? Yeah? So you mentioned that you collect these in Japanese support. Are you, is it for assuming that the iOS will help handle these languages? Like what if you would end up need those to support these languages? Yeah, well, it, it's optional only, only if you use this with locales. Okay. So which then the, you can select, select which uh, character sets conversions are, are included, for instance. What about uh, Check spelling and autocompletion is a part of this? Uh, that's something that is in these data files that are mapped, like mapped in at memory at runtime, so okay. that's not optional. It's not optional? No. Okay. That should be present always. Okay, cool. But what's, what's optional is like uh, character set tables for for some. Well, uh, they might be actually still use these uh, encodings, but not inside ODF or OXML. Okay. At least I hope so. <laughs> of course. If Does Android have the same limitation? Uh, not exactly, but it's a good idea to, of course, 
reduce on your unneeded size anyway. But on Android, there is no limitation on the on the code size. There is one. There is one limitation. It's not the same one. It's a different one. The initial application size must be. You can download this, but the initial size is limited to 50 megabytes, something like that. Uh, I don't remember the exact uh, number. I have heard that also, but I, also, I think also I have read that it has been removed, this limit also. Ah, okay. So I'm not so sure. Can Android also have to be one executable? No, dynamically? no you, can, you can in Android load dynamically, dynamic developer libraries, but there the problem is that the number of these are is very restricted, at least in some Android versions. It was something like 100 libraries. And as we have several hundreds, we decided to just link everything into one shared library anyway. Because then we can use the same logic as for iOS. Thank you.